once again i welcome you to the audio version the audio edition the audio part of our book the politics of the banyampi that we recently released on all our social media platforms most especially on our youtube channel thank you for viewing thank you for listening thank you for subscribing thank you for following continue commenting and sharing all our social media platforms i want to remind you of our social media platforms among which include the joseph tamale mirundi on facebook we have that page we also have our our youtube channel as the tamale mirundi official follow us on instagram as well as twitter those are the social media platforms very soon you will be able to download all the audio versions of these books on uh, other arenas like spotify shazam uh, itunes icloud then uh, as well as you will find it on uh, uh, on alibaba so probably we must we must even put it there to make sure that all our listeners are very well catered for uh in our readings i want to remind all the listeners right now all the viewers on our youtube channel that um we had our first part of the politics of the banyampi a book authored by joseph tamale mirundi son of mole namatov mirundi and john mirundi uh this is the latest book as you listen to uh this audio version Tonight, today, we are right away bringing you the fourth audio version of uh, uh, the politics of the Banyampi. But before I go straight to reading this uh, part, I want to remind you of uh, what we went through in the first part. Before I read this, I as well remind you that this book is available on youtube in uh, basically two languages we have one in english atenga tulina nechitundu echo luganda very soon we are releasing the swahili edition of the same part so keep yourself subscribed and uh, uh, as well click the notification bell such that wherever we post something you are able uh, to follow it up in the introduction of the politics of the banyambi I want to remind you that this book was inspired by the events the, 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 by the events that happened in our country at the Central Bank of Uganda. These incidents included alleged printing of extra currency that was put on Uganda's chartered plane and the, uh, on the same plane there existed extra a cargo that was not supposed to move on Uganda's chartered plane, chartered to transport Ugandan printed currency. The fracas, all the sagas at Bank of Uganda, inspired the writing of this book. In the introduction, the author, um, the author, tells you that he's a good student of mass communication, so he uses similes uh, to communicate. That's why he uses the word Abanyampi, which he uses to refer to the innocent who pay for the crimes others have committed. The word Abanyampi means the innocent who pay for the crimes others have committed. In this case, in Uganda, there are people who are actually smaller that are, are, are blamed for the offenses or crimes committed by their seniors among which may include uh, big government officials as well as business, big businessmen in town. In the introduction we saw the impact of Banyampi politics on Museveni's future as well as the history of African leaders and why they, why they are so interested in creating Obunyampi politics in the country. We saw different independent African leaders and why their leadership was highly based on intimidating their subjects. 
that was under a heading African leaders mastered the art of intimidation. We went ahead in the second part and read about how African leaders created Obnyampi politics as well as in the third part we gave several examples and we gave uh, the different ways in which the mafias in Uganda operate. Right about now, let me go straight to the fourth part of the book, Politics of the Banyampi, and I shall start with uh, the heading, The Situation at Bank of Uganda and the Banyampi Politics. Joseph Tamale Mirond writes that we should understand that the mafias apply in what in propaganda is called the inoculation theory. The theory requires that the public must be prepared for the good or bad news. What the red paper story was intended to do was to portray Governor Mutevile as senile and that he can no longer control the affairs of the central bank. This, however, exposes, exposes their naivety that how could a crucial government institution suffer a virtue when all directorates and commissions are headed by capable people? The story carried an allegation that the governor was only dealing with junior staff who happens to be his cousin. This is also intended to prepare the public that apart from his cousin, the governor cannot issue directives to senior staff at Bank of Uganda. However, this claim also implies that whatever happens at Bank of Uganda was not the responsibility of the governor. The red paper story is therefore fake news due to the following reasons. The central bank cannot be left under the stewardship of a senile and unreliable person owing to its importance to the country. In addition, any serious government cannot allow situations where there exists virtue in the management of the central bank. This, the question should be, how did the story of Bank of Uganda leak to the media if it is all true? Obviously, this is done to prepare the gullible public. Why did it not attract the attention of the minister in charge of finance? Why is it not rejected by Bank of Uganda officials? It didn't simply because it was meant to serve a purpose. This is why the senile governor woke up out of his slumber to alert Lieutenant Colonel Edith Nakalema to dramatize the whole incident. Secondly, like other government bureaucrats, the governor believes that invoking Nakalema's name in matters of corruption gives their sinister motives credibility. Previously, they would refer such matters to the IGG's office or the Auditor General. In many cases at Bank of Uganda, which are criminal in nature, the governor plays the role of a whistleblower, which is strange. As a person in charge of the institution, one would expect him to confront and deal with the matter instead. Why should he refer matters he would have handled to other institutions? One would ask, who are these people amongst staff at Bank of Uganda that are more powerful than the governor himself? Instead of trying to cover up his incompetency, he should better tender in his resignation and pave way for a competent person. However, the governor's inoculation theory and his deliberate move to portray himself as a sick person do not help him answer the following questions. 1. If there was extra money printed as alleged at the break of the story about Bank of Uganda scandal, 
how could the money just disappear? Compare this to the alleged plot to assassinate Aida Nantaba. Media confirmed that the minister had actually survived an assassination attempt and went on to describe the suspect's identity. Media reports went further to provide details of the story. According to the media, the minister was trailed by two assailants. Then after police cornered the two cyclists, one jumped off the bike and fled to the bush. It was further alleged that police, using sniffer dogs, mounted the search operation but failed to arrest the fugitive. The following day, there was fire directed at Minister Nanta. Media reports indicate that Iso wanted to arrest her and drag her to police. How could Nantaba turn into a killer when actually he did not accompany the police to the scene of Sebulime's murder in broad daylight? Fortunately, the killer carried out the murder while his colleagues on police patrol were watching. Did the police officers record a statement on what happened between Sally and Sebulime before the latter was murdered? Why has the statement not gone public? What is clear, however, is the fact that police patrol car came from Kawempe direct to Kayunga. The similarities between these two cases confirms the presence of a mafia hand. Thirdly, it is so easy to successfully choose a woman of a boating if she has been seen to be pregnant by the public. With that, she must prove to the accuser what exactly happened to the pregnancy. Likewise, what has now become of extra luggage that was impounded at the airport? Therefore, the management of the central bank is on, is on spot to explain what was contained in the extra luggage at the center of this controversy. Now that the contents of the extra luggage have been identified and the owners exposed, we move to the following. Who authorized the extra cargo on a plane exclusively chartered to ferry Bank of Uganda currency? Was the plane jointly chartered by, by was the plane jointly chartered by other people and Bank of Uganda? In this case, no proper explanation has been provided to this effect. It therefore remains that the personalities mentioned in this saga, including city businessman Mandela and Imbire, and the Entebbe International Airport handlers, all Ugandans an explanation as to what type of cargo was transported alongside Bank of Uganda currency notes. If there was no extra printed cash, what motivated Governor Mutebile to call in Nakalima to seal off Bank of Uganda premises? Nakalima can only seal off Bank of Uganda premises only if money disappeared from Bank of Uganda coffers. However, what was found on the chartered plane was impounded at the airport, not at Bank of Uganda. However, this state of affairs can be explained by two factors. One, the governor wanted to make it appear as if he was not aware of what was impounded at the airport. Two, furthermore, the mafia wanted their net to move from the impounded goods to Bank of Uganda and stress the claim of extra printed money, yet it was a naked lie. The sealing of Bank of Uganda premises would happen if the extra printed money or call it illegal or unauthorized money had left the airport. However, since all suspicious cargo had been impounded at the airport, there was no reason 
for sealing and searching Bank of Uganda premises. Furthermore, arresting the commissioner in charge of currency was another blunder. Does it mean that he sits alone to determine the amount to be printed? If I may ask, why did we not witness such embarrassing scandals at Bank of Uganda before the succession battle for the next governor? Secondly, apart from the extra printed money, no evidence has been adduced in regard to Nakalima's such operation. This then exonerates Mr. Maringa, the then director of currency. Judging from the red paper story which portrayed the governor sickly, knew about the arrest of junior officers at Bank of Uganda who went to Germany comes up as a lady trap to implicate the innocent young men. For example, were they supposed to count the printed notes to confirm whether they tallied with the official order? Has anyone produced the order? Has anyone produced the order form to see whether it corresponds with the printed currency? Another important factor is that there is no evidence that they are responsible for the additional luggage on the chartered plane. There exists no evidence from the Mbire and Mandela group implicating the younger men, Abanyampi. Therefore, can this confirm that the young men were dragged to court because they were unfortunate to have been set up to become Abanyampi? Soon after the arrest and arraigned before court, I predicted that they would be granted bail and directed to appear before court every after 14 days. This, I said, will be done to prolong the issue until the public completely forgets about the matter. Their target, Mr. Malinga, has lost credibility and steam. He will not be able to attend to his official duties and the scam spells his gradual exit from the bank. This is how mafias operate. Mr. Malinga will obviously be replaced by an, an ally of the mafia gang. Malinga will be denied liberty in a mafia style to defend himself since he is on bail and the mafia controlled media will not allow him to defend himself. I have always argued elsewhere that the deadly Ugandan Mafia will not stop at anything. If they are pursuing a lizard, they will burn the whole house. Likewise, in the process of pursuing Malinga, they have exposed themselves. How can a central bank pump 500 billion in a well-functioning economy? The Mafia revealed in a self-implicating statement that they had agreed with the currency printing firm that the firm would compensate them for transporting additional cargo on a chartered plane. This exonerates the two young Banyambi who, were, who went to supervise the printing of the currency. If the two Banyambi were responsible for the unauthorized cargo, why did the plane owners own the responsibility? However, the dreaded mafia could not realize this and went ahead to drag the innocent Banyambi to court. In addition, the mafia made another dangerous disclosure which ended up damaging their bad image. In their usual arrogance, they noted that the printing firm had agreed to reduce costs on the next order. How can a medical doctor say that your patient is about to be discharged when actually he is on a stretcher being taken to the intensive care unit? Honestly, to an economy that is doing well, there is no need to make arrangements for printing extra billions. Whether you like it or not, 500 billions cannot be replacing all the currency. In fact, this is an open warning to all stakeholders in the economy about the looming inflation that might be around the corner. Interestingly, the mafia don't have political engines. They have embarrassed Malinga 
at a time when the president is going to a tour on his home region. Uh, this marks the end of part four of the politics of Bibanyampi. We shall start in part five on how mafias create Abanyampi. That will be the heading under which we shall go ahead to give you examples of different Banyampi in the country Uganda among which uh, the mafias uh, have, we have, they have mentioned the several here in the book. Um, I can see Omnyampi, Dr. Okwago, and the Omnyampisa, Grace Akuro, the CID, how he uses, how she uses the uh, mafia style to create Banyampi, Omnyampi Biandala, Omnyampi, so many. So continue subscribing, sharing, and commenting on uh, our social media platforms. Most importantly, subscribe to our YouTube channel because there we have the ability to provide to you the audio and video formats of all such that we keep ourselves up to date with the, our loved author, Mr. Joseph Tamale Mirundi. Goodbye for now. See you in part five.